Hey, in today's video, we're going to talk about how you configure employee data screens. So stick around. In the video today, we are going to cover the first place, the first thing that uh, new uh, customers should be learning when it comes to employee central configuration, and that is managed business configuration. This is where you go to do most of the key things that you're going to need to do um, when it comes to updating the configuration within Employee Central. So it's a really important uh, transaction to become fami familiar with. Uh, now, a couple of caveats here. Uh, the first is that this only handles the, I would say, quote unquote, standard um, uh, employee data structures. Uh, so this is distinct from uh, things like payment information and like deductions that are newer and that are using um, metadata framework uh, structures. Uh, and that those MDF structures are handled separately. Um, we will do a video down the line on that. But the other area that you need to know is that if you are using onboarding 2.0, there are additional uh, things that you're going to need to do configuration wise in order to support that. Um, and so we have a separate video that's going to come after that, after this one, that is going to cover how you handle onboarding 2.0. Um, if you have onboarding 2.0 in your system, the configuration does change a good bit. And we're going to talk about that in our uh, part two video. So with those two caveats um, out of the way, let's jump in and let's look at the configuration. Okay, so to get to managed business configuration, we simply need to type in managed business configuration. And so what I'm going to show you when we jump in here is uh, explain a little bit of the uh, anatomy of the screen. So on the right side is the detail uh, of the fields. We're going to get into that in, in much greater detail here in a bit. But on the left side is where you're going to see all the portlets. So on the upper left are the HRS elements that are used for Employee Central. But also I want to call your attention to the fact that the employee profile is also visible here. So if you want to do configuration tasks for just the general employee profile, uh, you can do those uh, here as well. Um, but now um, looking up into the portlets themselves, you can see we have comp info, email, uh, what have you. And now I'm expanding job info. And from within job info, you can see that we have um, both person types as well as country versions. We're going to get into uh, particularly the person type configuration uh, in the second version of this or the second uh, part of this uh, uh, series. But uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on job info and just look at the detail of the fields themselves. Starting from the left, we have the identifier column, and this is where we would select uh, be either standard fields or custom fields. We'll show that a little bit more later. Uh, the label field, of course, is this is where we put in the label, and we can also translate, um, and you can see a, an example of uh, where all the languages are supported. The section is something that's unique to job information. It allows us to say which of the sections, whether it's uh, job information, position, uh, uh, org information, which, we, which uh, area of job information we want. And then next up is the enabled field. The enable field says whether or not that field should actually be in use or not. If we select no, then the field is not available as part of the data dictionary or anywhere. Um, and the, the next field that we want to talk about is the details. And this is one we're going to look at different examples of. So the first one I want to show you is how if we mouse over, you can see that TR means trigger rule. So that means there's a trigger rule tied into position. So we'll look at that as we look through the details now. Getting into the detail, you will see the first uh, important field is mandatory. So yes or no on that field, uh, whether or not we want that field to be a required field. Um, we're going to look at the uh, reference object and what that means uh, in a little bit, but some of the other fields that we want to uh, highlight right now, number one would be visibility. Visibility, uh, I can either set fields to edit or view. Um, that can be hit or miss as far as whether it's uh, respected by the configuration, but it, the, the selection is there. 
Trigger rule shows us any business rules that we have tied to the change of values on that uh, specific field. We'll talk about that more in, in later videos. Okay, so those are the basic fields. Now, what we're going to do for the remainder of this video is show you some other things that um, are also uh, covered as part of the configuration. The first thing we want to show is what if, if I uh, look at this one, you can see this one's an HR uh, sync mapping. And so what you can see here is that we actually have business unit. Uh, if we scroll down uh, to this specific example, we have an HRS sync mapping uh, to the standard field of custom 01 business unit. So we have this field being synchronized uh, to the employee profile to a custom field. The next details uh, section item that we want to cover is the FI. FI um, stands for filter. So what this is used for is, let's say that we have a subordinate object. In this case, the division is a child of the uh, division of the business unit. And in this case, what we are, uh, what we have, if you look at the field criteria, you will see that the uh, division is getting filtered based on the business unit. So you can look at this and see uh, the example of how the filtering uh, works. So now let's walk through a custom field. You will see here that I have going into the detail on custom string three, which is a field called supervi supervisor position vacant. And the one thing I wanted to show you here is an example of a pick list. So you can see here that I have a type of reference object set as pick list. And also there is the pick list definition and the pick list right now is set to yes, no. And of course, um, if you're watching this video, then you're probably pretty well aware that that is the ID that you would go into manage pick lists and you would be able to see a, a definition um, of a pick list with yes, no. So we've gone through most of the key stuff on field definition, but the one uh, other thing I want to make sure I show you is how you would go about adding a new field uh, into the system. So the only thing really there is to this is you're going to select one of the custom fields. So depending on the, the type, it's either a string or a date, uh, you name it. Um, and then you just select whichever one is uh, still available. And then you're going to fill out everything according to the same process that we went through and we looked at on the field definitions. So again, really simple. Um, so I'm going to clean that up because we don't actually need it right now. Next, I'm showing you the trigger rules section, and this is where we will keep all of the business rules that are related to the um, uh, the portlet itself. So these are where we keep our save rules, our post save rules, our initialization rules. Um, that is a, a, a much broader conversation that we will have another day, um, but that is what that section is for. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you is the country specific field. So these are specific to the different portlets on which ones have them. But here you can see uh, the job information USA field. So these are the country specific fields for USA. And so you can maintain those fields here. So the last thing we wanna to cover today is dynamic group filters. Dynamic group filters are a way to go beyond what SAP success factors delivers for filtering when it comes to your permission groups. So uh, those of you that are uh, familiar with role-based permissions know that if you go into the permission groups, there are certain things that are listed in those permission groups. This allows you to extend that. So in our example, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a uh, additional uh, a dynamic group filter uh, to allow us to use pay scale area as a permission attribute. So you can see here, we're going to click on DG filters. Um, I'm, first, I just want to show you the one that's already there. There's one for employment details for contingent workers. So we can use that as part of our permission groups. But let's say that we want to also add um, pay scale area so that we can use it as part of our permission group. So what we're going to do is we will select job information here. And then from the details, uh, I will select pay scale area. And that's pretty much it. So now when I go to manage permission groups, you will see that the, that pay scale area is now something I can use uh, in order to make decisions 
I mean, on permission groups. So that's pretty much it for today's video. We kind of went through this in detail. Next time, we're going to focus in on per, uh, person types specifically for onboarding. Thanks a lot for your time.